Start the procedure by creating a dorsomedial incision that is approximately 45 degrees from the plantar plane and well medial to the extensor hallucis longus. Utilize a slim osteotome to mobilize the joint and release any plantar soft tissue attachments. Place the paddle of the cut guide into the joint with the cutting side facing the metatarsal. Place the short 2 mm wire into the second most distal hole. Place a long 2 mm wire into the most distal hole. Ensure that both wires are bicortical, but not into the second metatarsal. To prevent the cut guide from being displaced during resection, a 2 mm wire can be placed into one of the extra holes to hold the guide in place. Utilize one of the provided extra long 40 mm saw blades to complete the metatarsal cut. Care should be taken not to cut into the second metatarsal base. Once the metatarsal cut is complete, remove the cut guide from the two K wires in order to remove the bone sliver. Flip the cut guide around 180 degrees and place it back into the joint and over the existing wires. Place the frontal plane joystick over the two distal wires with the handle facing in either direction. Using the joystick, assess the rotational mobility of the metatarsal by using fluoroscopy to assess the distal metatarsal and sesamoids. If needed, a lateral soft tissue release may be performed. Make a small stab incision just lateral to the head of the second metatarsal. Place the lateral hook of the reducer around the neck of the second metatarsal between the second and third metatarsal. Place the medial hook over the skin onto the head of the first metatarsal. While holding the reducer in place, tighten the reducer knob clockwise until it is snug, but do not close down all of the intermetatarsal angle. With one hand, utilize the joystick to generate frontal plane correction by rotating the sesamoids into proper placement directly under the head of the metatarsal. With a second hand, place a two millimeter short wire through one of the holes in the medial hook into the metatarsal to lock frontal plane correction and hold the reducer in place. This wire should be placed by cortical but should not penetrate the second metatarsal. Dial in the intermetatarsal angle by turning the reducer knob clockwise until desired reduction is achieved. Utilizing AP fluoroscopy, confirm that the desired IM angle and sesamoid position is achieved. Dorsiflex the hallux to engage the windlass mechanism of the plantar fascia, which will compress the first TMT joint and provide apposition of the cut guide paddle to the medial cuneiform joint surface. While still engaging the windlass, place a short 2 mm wire into the second most proximal hole. Place the long 2 mm wire into the most proximal hole. Utilize one of the provided 40 mm saw blades to complete the cuneiform cut. Once the cut is complete, remove the cut guide while leaving only the four wires and the distal reducer in place. Remove the cuneiform resection. If additional bone needs to be removed, a recut of either joint surface can be performed. Perform any additional desired joint preparation. Starting with rack block zero, align the four dorsal holes of the block over the four dorsal wires with the two angled holes facing distally. Once aligned, the blunt side of the universal handle can be slid into the large hole of the rack block to provide more leverage. Use the handle to push the compressor block down to the bone. Apply plantar counter pressure to ensure the force from the block does not plantar shift the metatarsal. Visually confirm satisfactory bony apposition of the first TMT joint and confirm under lateral fluoroscopy if desired. If additional bony apposition is needed, remove rack block zero and place one of the additionally provided blocks. Increasing number corresponds with increased compression. Place a cross joint wire by driving a long 2 mm wire through one of the holes of the rack block. It is recommended to use the lateral hole first to avoid the plate. Remove all four dorsal wires and slide the compressor block off the cross joint wires, 
any crossroads fixation options such as staple compression plates or staples can be utilized to fixate the first TMT joint. Align the plate by centering the staple slot over the joint and positioning the plate in a direct medial location. Place one olive wire into the most distal hole and one olive wire into the most proximal hole. Align the 18 mm drill guide to the center slot of the plate and use the 3.2 mm reamer to drill for one of the staple legs. Place a temporary fixation pin in the prepared hole. Use the 3.2 mm reamer to drill for the second staple leg. Remove the temporary fixation pin. Ensuring the legs are parallel, utilize the inserter to implant the HIMAX staple through the plate until the staple is almost flush with the plate surface. Rotate the inserter knob counterclockwise until pressure is released. Then rotate the inserter counterclockwise until the staple releases. If needed, a tamp can be used to ensure the staple is flush to the plate. Once the staple is placed, the olive wires and cross joint wires can be removed. Determine if locking or non-locking screws will be utilized. Place the drill guide onto the most distal hole first. Use a reamer to prepare a hole for the screw. The depth of the hole can be read by examining the line on the reamer within the window of the drill guide. Additionally, if desired, the provided depth gauge can be used. Attach the provided H10 self-retaining driver to the handle. Load the selected screw onto the driver and insert into the hole. Once the screw is placed, toggle the driver side to side to remove it from the screw. Follow the same screw preparation steps to place two additional screws into the remaining proximal holes. Attach the universal handle to the anti-drift wire guide by threading the handle tip into the top of the guide. Dock the guide into the plate and ensure the laser mark line on both parts is aligned. Under fluoroscopy, place the anti-drift bolt depth wire through the guide until the tip of the wire is in the base of the second metatarsal. If a more distal trajectory is desired, the handle can be rocked proximally to aim the guide more distally. Examine the window of the wire guide to determine which bolt size will be needed. Use the anti-drift bolt cannulated reamer to drill over the wire. Ensure the medial cortex of the second metatarsal is penetrated. Remove the depth wire and attach the selected anti-drift bolt to the provided driver and place it through the plate and into the prepared hole. Verify the final construct placement with fluoroscopy. This portion of the technique is only for users who wish to perform the curatage technique or wish to complete their cuts freehand without a cut guide. Complete the metatarsal and cuneiform cut freehand or perform the curatage technique. Place the freehand wire template into the joint at a dorsomedial position. While ensuring the paddle is flush with the metatarsal joint surface, pin a short 2 mm wire into the second most distal hole of the wire guide. Place a long 2 mm wire into the most distal hole of the wire guide. The remaining steps of the technique are identical to the standard version of the Dynabunion technique.